traditional recipe with you guys for boil and fry provision and fried fish and guys I hope all my viewers and all my subscribers are doing well and keeping safe and I'm just gonna show you guys the step-by-step -step how you make boil and fry provision and fried fish guys for the boil and fry provision we're gonna be eating it with some fried fish so before I start with the provision, I just wanna season up the fish and I'm gonna add some salt. And this is gonna be like half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just sprinkling on the top like that. And I wanna add some black pepper and I'm gonna add another half a teaspoon of black pepper. We wanna flavor this up the best we can so this fish can be very nice and flavorful for our boil and fry. So the next thing I wanna do is add some green seasoning and I just blend up a fresh batch. And this is, um, this seasoning have garlic, green onions, pepper, and thyme, fine thyme, and broadleaf thyme. So two kinds of thyme. And I'm just gonna take this seasoning and just massage, massage the seasoning into the fish. So this can be flavor up well, because most of the time I'll season the fish for um, like a, for a couple of hours but right now I can't do it for a couple of hours but by the time I finish um, peeling the provision and doing all that it's gonna be enough time for this to marinate so I'm gonna just cover it and leave it so when I finish with the provision peeling my provision then I will come back to this to fry it so we'll show you guys the next step so guys the provision that we're using and back home we call these provision and some of them are root veg so this one is edos and over, and sometimes you see them in the supermarket as taro and here i have sweet potatoes from guyana but in the supermarket here we see them as yellow or white yam and this is cassava and in the supermarket here they the the name that they go by is yuca and here i have some ripe plantain for the um provision bile and fry provision because for me the ripe plantain have a very nice sweet taste at the end of the dish and the kids love it with with the sweet ripe plantain so i'm going to show you guys how i peel these and how simple they are to peel because um they sometimes it looks like a lot to peel but it's very very easy so let me get my knife and a cutting board and i'll show you guys how we peel these start with the sweet potato and i usually cut off the head of it and then you can cut the bottom if you want but and then you just take this and go like that with a knife but i'm gonna show you guys with the peeler how fast you can do that with the peeler so with the um you get a, a regular potato peeler and all you have to do is just pull it just like you're doing the potato like from top to bottom like that and it is so simple to peel so you can do it this way or if you prefer to do it with the knife and if you get a nice clean peel when you when you peel um when you do with the peel as well as with the knife so i'm gonna continue peel the pot sweet potatoes and this is how our back home sweet potato look it have this nice yellow light yellow color inside and the flavor is very nice and sweet so this is what it look like but they call them sweet yam in the supermarket here but this is what we know as sweet potato so i'm gonna continue peel the other one and then i'll show you guys how i peel the other stuff Tava or the yuca same thing cut the end and then you can tell if it's good or not and then what i want to do is cut it back into small pieces so then it will be easy for me to peel when i cut it into small pieces and this head you want to cut this off because i find at the top here is a little bit hard so you don't want to keep that and if you see any blue or grayish spot you need to cut it off because that won't be good in the um in the dish so i'm gonna peel these and if they're um if they're blue inside i won't use them because it, it won't be flavorful but I, I have more so if this one is not good i'll 
use another one so what you what you want to do is get your knife under the skin and just keep pushing 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 until you reach right around to the other end and then you will get the whole peel off like that look at that so one peel you, you just lift and keep lifting and lifting and moving your knife and you'll get the whole peel and this is what this one look like the plantain same thing i usually cut the two ends off and then what you want to do if it's too big to handle i can peel the whole thing like that if it's too big to handle like that i'll show you guys another way and with the right plantain they are so so simple to peel you just lift put a line down and you just lift it up like that and then you peel right back and everything the whole plantain inside will come out like that look how this is it this look like it's another plantain right but look that's so simple but i'm gonna show you guys another way if you think that way is too big to handle you just cut the ends and what i like to do sometimes i will cut them in two or three pieces and then you just do the same thing like the big one and you put a line and you just pull it backwards like that and that there you go it's done so that's how simple it is for the right planting so this is the yucca or the edo and this one here you cut off the top and what we usually do you peel it a little bit deep so you don't get the um you make sure that you can see the white part if you're seeing pink or a little bit of yellowish color you have to make sure you get that part off because people say that that part will scratch your hands or your mouth when you're eating it but you have to make sure that you're peeling it to see the white part in the inside and if you if you can see yellow or um, pink part you just make sure you peel them off so guys these are the provision and these are root from the root they're under the ground the plantain um, grows on the top in a bunch, but the sweet potato the, and the edos and the cassava, they comes from in the ground. And back home, they always say these are healthy, healthy things to use. When you eat these things, they have so much good health benefits that our older people used to work very, very hard. Um, they did everything manually. <coughs> Um, the older women, bless you, Jessica, they used to have so many kids and people always wanted to know how they did. They washed their clothes by hands. They cleaned their floors by hands. They did everything by hands, like um, manual labor at, for housework. Like now we have um, a dishwasher. We have um, we have our washer and dryer for clothing. We have vacuums to vacuum everything we have now. And still sometimes we are very, very tired. But they said back home when the people eat these kinds of food, it gave them special nutrients and vitamins and help them to live longer and to have um, to be in good health without having um, without being tired and, you know, and feeling fatigue and all that. So these were the food the older people eat and it helped them to stay strong and healthy so i'm gonna keep peeling the rest and then i'll show you guys the next step so guys we usually add the provision into the water when it's really really hot i just um add one teaspoon of salt into the water and i'm adding I, the first uh provision that i'm adding is the edos because this one is way much harder to cook so I'm adding the hardest um, provision first. So I add the edos and guys, edos are really, really rich in iron. And um, back home, I remember when somebody was low in iron, they always get, give you a lot of food with edos, like soups, mashed edos with butter. You can make it in um, edos in bile and fry like I'm doing today, edo curry. Um, fry up edo some kind of um, dish with edos inside so you can help to build back your blood and even the leaves of the edos are really super delicious and very high in iron so it's a kind of a spinach the leaves but it's so so flavorful so when I go back home that's always on my list to get to eat is the edo leaves guys after 10 minutes we're gonna check the edos 
and they are the color change so i know they're cooking so uh, the next thing i'm gonna add is the cassava and the cassava i remember our grandparents i watched them guys the, our grandparents used to tell us that cassava is full of nutrients and it's a healing food and that is rich in protein so all those who never had cassava before or didn't know what to do with it there's so many things that you can do with it this is one way that we cook it and then there are so many other things that you can make cassava ball you can make cassava egg ball cassava fritter so many different different things to consume cassava so and there's cassava bread um so so many things so guys these are the two hardest ones so i'm gonna let it cook for a bit before i add my um sweet ripe plantain and the sweet potatoes because those cook so quickly so i'm gonna leave um the you the cassava and the edo to cook for another 10 minutes and then i'm gonna add the other things inside okay guys so the edos and the cassava is cooking nicely and i can see from the color and the way it's looking i can now add into here my sweet potatoes and my plantain and again sweet potatoes is very very high in fiber and it's good for you so this is a very healthy pot that we're cooking here today and the plantain this is going to be a big pot too and the plantain that we're putting in the um, plantain is very rich in iron as well so the pot here that i'm cooking is a very nutritious um dish that i'm making here today this boil and fry provision we call it it's a very nutritious dish and it um it can keep you up for a very very long time i know for fact when you eat provision you don't feel um, hungry for a long long time this can keep you up because there's so much um, nutritious things in all these different um, provision so guys i let it cook and what I like to do when I'm making provision, I like all the provision to boil really, really soft. So when you're eating, it's gonna be very enjoying. I don't like when it's uh, um, hard and firm. I like when it's really soft and nice. So all the ingredients that I'm gonna add will soak right into it and make this so flavorful. So I'm gonna keep you guys, um, I'm gonna keep showing you guys step by step. So for now, I'm just gonna let it cook until all the provision is nice and soft. But if you find that any is cooked and done, you can always fish them out. And the ones that are not done, you can leave them to cook some more. So I'm gonna keep checking. If I notice the edos are soft and they, I can take them out, I'll take them out. And then I will leave the rest of the provision to cook until they're nice and soft and tender. Okay guys, so for the um, the bile and fry provision, my kids like when I make, um, we call it's a dumpling, but we call this duff. So I'm gonna put some seasoning into the flour and I'm gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of salt because we wanna flavor this, this duff up. And I'm gonna put half a teaspoon of black pepper because if we don't put some seasoning, it's gonna just taste like flour only. So half a teaspoon of black pepper and we're gonna add in there about a teaspoon of sugar because we want this to have a very nice flavor. So about a teaspoon of sugar and then we're gonna add one teaspoon of my green seasoning which is the green onion, garlic, um, pepper and we have in there thyme, two kinds of thyme and that's gonna flavor up this so much and some pepper did I mention pepper yes. pepper and then we want to put some about a half a teaspoon of baking powder actually we're gonna put one teaspoon baking powder because we want this duck this duff or dumpling to be nice and soft and fluffy so I'm gonna mix this here and with some water so i'm gonna grab the water and come back and show you guys how i do this i put one teaspoon of butter as well so i'm gonna mix this up a little because we want to want all the seasoning to mix up in the flour and when i need a dough it's gonna be all over the seasoning gonna be all over in the in the um 
mixture so I think it is mixed here now so just plain water regular room temperature and sorry Jess if I'm blocking you yes, okay. and I'm gonna knead this into a dough like when I'm making um, roti or bake and it's gonna be um, not it's gonna be just like when we're making the roti so but you don't have to let it sit or anything you're just gonna knead it straight away and put it right into there but I'll show you guys how we do that and guys I had to fish out the um the arrows and the cassava because they were boiling up and they get so soft I didn't want them to fall apart completely so I took those out and I'm still cooking the sweet potato and the rye plantain until they're nice and soft and tender in the meantime this duff or dumpling that we're making we're gonna put this into the pot as well to cook with the rest of the provision and then everything should be done at the same time so look at the how I'm mixing the dough it's just like when you're making the roti and the bake except for this one roti I don't add any seasoning to it ex only the baking powder and for this one here I'm flavoring it up because we want this to have some flavor. So I'm just gonna make sure that all the dough is nice and smooth and all this dry flour get mixed in into the dough like that. And then we'll come back and show you guys how we put the, the dumpling or the duff into the pot. We're gonna take half a little piece and then you roll it long like this and you put it into the the pot to cook and when it comes up back and a little bit more you know that it's done so I'm taking small pieces and you roll them off like that that's how I remember how we used to do them and then you put them right into the pot like that so you make another small dough just be careful with your steam, the steam. oh it's coming up look at that it's coming up but it's blocked by the um, planting and then you put another one in so as soon as they come up back be careful from the steam okay yes um, as soon as they come up back like that one a little bit more after you have to take them out for them to stay fluffy and nice because if you leave them too long to cook they're gonna become hard and it's not gonna be nice and soft and fluffy if it's um, it's gonna be hard and chewy if you leave it longer but you can still eat it that way but it tastes better when it's nice and fluffy so I'm gonna wait and take all them everything is I think all the other things are cooked so we're gonna make put take everything all together and strain them out of the water so I'm just gonna turn just show them yeah I'm just gonna turn it up so the other ones can come up so you guys can see look at that oh. Yeah, just please don't put your hand in the steam. There's one there, there, yeah. there, there, so, there, 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 See, all of them came up now. That means they're cooked. But I like to leave them like another two minutes or so. So they don't, they cook properly. And this is how you know that it's done. But look how quickly that came up. And these are going to be so fluffy, guys. I'm going to show you guys. And this one is still going. Like it's still swelling out and poofing up a little bit more. See? So they're gonna be super nice and fluffy. And we call these dumpling or duff, I remember. We used to call them back home. Some of my Guyanese friends will remember that terminology. We used to call the um, dumpling or sometimes they call them duff when we were growing up back home. So guys, this is good here. I'm gonna strain it and then I'll show you guys the next step this is the rest of the provision all I want to do on top of it I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt and these are the set that I took out earlier I'm gonna put salt in here as well so we can flavor it up and then I'm gonna put about a half teaspoon that was about a half a teaspoon of salt and we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of black pepper into the provision one I took out before the other that's why they're in two separate things and I usually fry up my provision in butter because that gave it a beautiful flavor so I have about two teaspoon two tablespoon of butter in, in the pot and I'm adding here um, half a red onion half white onion and 
uh, two green onions. So I'm going to give this a stir. Now, and look how nice that look. And what I like to do, I like to put in here into the pot with the seasoning and the butter. I like to put a little bit of salt in here because when I add the provision into the thing from the bottom of, of the pot, those ones won't have salt. So I'm adding another half a teaspoon and I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of black pepper as well. So we have flavor everywhere in the top of the provision and at the bottom. And guys, you don't wanna cook your um, onions and green onions too much. You still want it to be nice and crunchy. So my stove is on low. And I'm gonna put everything in now. I wanna sneeze from the black pepper. I, I'm gonna put everything in now. And see, and what I do, I usually, everything is nice and super soft. I never turn it. What I usually do, I always flip it like that. Just be careful, okay? I always flip, flip it like this. So if you look here now, because it's nice and soft, and if you only turn it with a spoon, it's gonna get like too soft. So if you can look, if you see, you can um, you can see the seasoning. I wanna flip it a little bit more. This looks good. This is good, look here. Look at that. And it smells so good, I'm tired from, from flipping it. So guys, this is done. I'm gonna fry the fish and we'll come back and show you guys the plating. The fish that I had marinating had enough time for all this goodness to soak in. So I'm just gonna um, flour it. Ooh la la. And these are the Bangamary filet, guys. And these are Bangamary from Guyana. For all my Guyanese friends, I'm gonna show you guys what the packet look like. You can find them in the West Indian store. And they're th these ones here. Wow, that's so, so amazing. This is the, say it says Bango Mary here, filet. And these are the big one, the king size and product of Guyana. So if you're looking for Bango Mary filet, this is a good one. And it's called Mid-Atlantic Seafood. PSI, Mid-Atlantic Seafood. So I just love to buy the um, Bango Mary filet because... Anytime you feel like eating fried fish, you can just season up some quickly and add it to any dish. Or if you just feel like eating the bang, um, f the fish, fried fish only, you just season it and you fry it. So I'm, I have my coconut oil was warming up and I'm gonna put these in. I don't wanna put them into high, high heat for them to burn. So I'm gonna fry them on medium and I'm gonna put in um, four pieces at a time so they have enough space in the pan and it's not overcrowded. So after I finish frying up the Banga Mary filling, I will plate and let you guys see. So guys, we're gonna turn these over and I remember, I think I put this was the first one and I'm gonna turn this one over. It looks like it's frying nicely and we're gonna flip them now. And then we're gonna let them fry about another two minutes so it's cooked properly. And then we're gonna take these out and put in the other batch. But look how beautiful it's looking, nice and golden brown, right guys? So crispy. Okay guys, so we're gonna take these out now. They're nice and golden brown. Ooh, they look really nice. And that's just the way I want it. So um, I usually you usually put a paper towel before you take them out but I didn't have the chance to do that. So you can, um, all the oil that's coming out can soak up into the paper towel. But guys, I will do that in a few minutes. But for now, I have to put in the other set. And I'm just gonna um, put this in the other batch now. And let it cook until they're nice and golden brown on both sides. And then we're ready to plate, guys. To enjoy this beautiful fried fish and boil and fry provision that I always like to have once in a while because this reminds me of some of the food I used to eat back home. Well, so guys, I forget to put um, pepper into this dish. 
I usually like to cut up some pepper and add it to the dish when I'm cooking it, but um, I forgot, but that's fine. So I sprinkle some pepper sauce into mine because you want to have nice bite of pepper into this dish and look how beautiful it look guys look how nice and beautiful and everything is cooked soft so i'm gonna try and show you guys how the dumpling or the duff look i want to cut it with a knife to show you guys so let me do that and turn it off so guys i'm gonna cut it and show you guys how nice it looks from the inside so just if you want to come close up to let them see yeah. and this is so nice and soft and look at that guys look at the inside how it is it's like bread yes it's like a bread so you can put your fried pieces of fried fish in here or you can um you can eat it however you like but i'm gonna just dig into this and i'm gonna take oops that piece fell <laughs> but that's okay i'm gonna take another piece and I'm gonna let you guys know. So, guys, cheers. Mm -hmm. Guys, so soft and fluffy like a pillow. Amazing. So, guys, if you're ever making it, please don't um leave it in the water to cook too long. As soon as it float up, leave it for another two minutes and then take it out. Because if you don't, it's going to become chewy. So guys, this is so soft and fluffy. Every time I make this dish, I have to make the dumpling or the duff for my kids because they always request it. So I'm going to taste the sweet plantain now. And I have to get a nice piece of pepper in there. So guys, again. Mm. Mm. The sweetness of the plantain. If you guys ever try rye plantain before, when you cook it like this, it brings out even more of the sweetness. And with the butter that I put to fry everything up, guys, it's just amazing. So, guys, I'm going to taste the cassava. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. It's cooked so soft to perfection. It just melts away in my mouth. And this piece here is the edo and this is one of my favorite because i love the um the flavor of edos and to know that i'm putting some rich iron in my body i just love this so the edos mm. and that's just melting too so guys the fish is nice and crunchy and i don't um want to keep tasting all night long but this is so nice and crunchy on the outside and it's so nice in the inside. I'm just going to take a bite with the pepper. And I'm going to let you guys know. Mm. Guys, so, so good. Crunchy on the outside. Soft and nice in the inside. And you can taste the flavor. Sorry, guys, my mouth is full. You can taste the flavor of the rich seasoning. I can taste the um the seasoning with the garlic and the green onion and everything in there it's amazing the fish is just seasoned perfect so guys this dish can eat with fish curry if you have leftover fish curry from the day before this is perfect because you put all the gravy and everything it works well or this dish can also eat with salt fish salted fish and you can eat this dish with that as well or you can eat it just as as it is so hope you guys like this step hope you guys hope i inspire you guys to cook some of these root vegetables and if you haven't cooked um or if you didn't cook provision for a long time i hope i inspire you to cook it sometime soon so excuse me so guys please be safe please remember to subscribe if you haven't done so and you just have to subscribe to one video only and please leave a thumbs up if you like this video until then have a wonderful evening. Bye for now.